for joining as well on uh, I don't know for some people if this is a quiet week or if this is like a frantic week while you try to uh, wrap wrap everything up before the holidays. So um, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, so uh, uh, I guess bef before I begin, um, I should let you know I'm going to uh, present essentially a webinar that we did last month when we when we launched this uh, tool and uh, we uh, we had a, a sort of a short webinar um, had great. It was uh, similar to this where um, you know we we had uh, people who had a mix of experience with with using the census, including some uh, StatCan uh, people and, uh, and and getting some feedback on where this tool uh, could go um, was a really, uh, really helpful for us. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a little bit more uh, about a background of why we um, decided to uh, put this tool out there and, and see what happens. But I guess before I do that, maybe I'll, I'll just do do a little bit of introduction myself. Um, I'm uh, Daniel Liansky. I'm the managing director at an organization called Purpose Analytics, and I'll share a little bit more about who we are and what we do. Uh, I'm in Toronto right now, um, and I think since we're talking about the census and we're talking about people and places, I think it would be very difficult to uh, to give a presentation with, without acknowledging the people who came before us and, and particularly uh, the upheaval of Indigenous people, uh, which is not apparent uh, uh, or shown in the data. Uh, we just sort of see the aftermath and in, uh, through the census of, of that um, uh, displacement uh, and, uh, and, and genocide that that's happened over time. Um, Toronto is the traditional territory of uh, the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, uh, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. Uh, now, of course, uh, home to um, uh, other uh, First Nations, Inuit, Métis people. Um, I don't know everyone on the call, so if, uh, feel free to, uh, I know that some of you are in Alberta, I know that there's some people calling outside, so uh, feel free to drop in the chat where uh, where you're from, um, if, you, if you know the uh, uh, the uh, territories so that uh, indigenous territories that were are, are represented by the areas, please feel free to drop that in there too. And I'm going to uh, share my screen and uh, we'll get started on on the presentation. OK, so first I'll, I'll just start with the, the shameless plug about uh, purpose analytics. Um, so we're a not for profit and we work exclusively with the uh, not for profits and charities on uh, making better use of data. Uh, sometimes it's their their own data that they collect and sometimes it's uh, third party and, and other data sources. And, and certainly the census is a, um, uh, you know, one of those data sets that we turn to often. Um, as a nonprofit, we we do a lot of consulting work uh, directly with with organizations, but we we went the nonprofit route because uh, we're particularly interested in seeing a, a more data informed nonprofit sector, and and we know that working with an organization organizations one at a time uh, is kind of a slow way to see sector change. So we're we're also uh, trying to find ways to work at, at a sector level. Uh, one of those is thinking about what are the uh, tools and, and services that we could provide that uh, could have broader use. And that's where census aggregator uh, came in. We, we thought that we might be solving a problem for the social sector around uh, just making it easier for them to access census data uh, in a way that that uh, uh, is commonly needed uh, among uh, social social sector organizations, particularly uh, community serving uh, community services and, and other sort of human services types of organizations. Um, the other area that we're interested in working in, and, and for those of you who who are, you know, uh, in nonprofits and and touching data, uh, you know that it's exciting to discover the other data people in the nonprofit sector. Um, we're we're often a little bit isolated from each other because we're, we're we tend to uh, uh, there tend to be not very many of us in in our uh, own organizations. So. Um, we're quite interested in how we can connect um, nonprofit data people together just so that we can share and learn from each other. Uh, so that's sort of the other area of, uh, of sort of sector level work that, that we're trying to do. Um, below the, these little uh, cartoons are, are some of the types of work areas that we do. Um, just to uh, highlight a, a couple, um, We've uh, found ourselves, although we, we think of ourselves as a data shop, we, we found ourselves doing a lot of automation and 
and, and usually with automation comes uh, process improvement. So, uh, you know, I guess the common terminology now is digital transformation. So we, we do find that digital transformation type of work has become a, a big part of um, some of our, our customer projects. Um, and uh, and certainly on the data side, just um, uh, providing reports, uh, reporting formats, and just making data uh, accessible at, uh, you know, in, in near real time rather than having reporting be a, a sort of a big production uh, or manual task or some of the things that we we work on most commonly. Um, so I did mention this this interest in doing public benefit work. So this our focus right now is uh, showing you about uh, census aggregator, but I did say we, we are working on this um, network of people in the nonprofit sector. If uh, if you work with data people or consider yourself to be a data person in the nonprofit sector, uh, please feel free to contact my colleague Padma at padmapurposeanalytics.ca. Uh, she'd love to connect with you. Um, we're, we're thinking about sort of right now informal ways to keep people connected, uh, maybe provide some um, lunch and learn type opportunities over, over the coming year, and we'd, we'd love to, uh, uh, to grow this network. OK, so that's that's the shameless plug stuff out of the way. We'll get to the, the main attraction, which is um, uh, census aggregator itself. Um, just before we, we jump into it, I, I'll, I'll just uh, recognize some of the our collaborators on this. Um, so our, our programmer is uh, Charlotte Gelfand, uh, who, who did the, the heavy lifting on um, on the actual coding. Um, this uh, tool is also done in uh, collaboration with uh, Jens von Bergman, who runs a company in BC called Mountain Math, and if you've uh, visited censusmapper.ca, he's he's the author of, of that. And I'll, I'll actually show you a little bit about Census Mapper too, just so you can sort of understand uh, how these two tools can can complement each other in terms of accessing uh, census data. Um, so before I show Census Mapper, um, uh, uh, the you know the primary source for census uh, data is through through Statistics Canada. Um, there's a and I know through your um, uh, sessions, I don't need to tell you that that there's loads of resources uh, uh, there. Um, I think you're you're probably all experts now uh, through uh, through the workshop series. Um, if you if you haven't come across CensusMapper.ca, it just pr provides a very nice like graphical. Uh, way of navigating uh, different census geographies. Um, you can basically zoom in from uh, census divisions and census census subdivisions all the way down to dissemination areas and, and kind of query the, the characteristics of those uh, those different areas across all the, uh, the, the sort of standard census profile variables. Um, and here's just an example of uh, uh, a DA that's that's selected in one of the visualizations that Jens has created that uh, uh, in this like uh, sort of wild, uh, I'm not even sure what the name of this this kind of uh, um, you know multi-tier pie chart is, but but it is basically all the census variables all shown in, in one slot, which is kind of neat. Um, so the the problem that we were trying to solve is, uh, you know, it's the the tools uh, that that are out there right now are, are quite effective for. Um, querying a single census geographies at a time, or, or maybe looking at a few uh, next to each other. Um, what, uh, what we see uh, people wanting to be able to do in, in the community sector is they want to be able to look at areas and get back uh, aggregate data for the areas. And it's not that this is uh, particularly a difficult task. Um, it's, that, uh, it's that it just can be a time consuming task. So what census aggregator is doing is, is sort of what, what I have up here on the screen. Uh, it's, it's really just uh, uh, combining census areas together and uh, choosing the appropriate aggregations across uh, just a narrow, you'll see we've just chosen a, a narrow subset of, of variables uh, and, it, and it just returns the, the aggregate uh, values for you so that you don't have to do that work yourself. So it really is as simple as taking sort of one area adding it to another area and uh, and getting the combination. So um, most of the times it's it's simple arithmetic, but you know, as you may know from your um, your, your workshop series, uh, if, if there's a handful of census uh, geographies that you want, let's say there's uh, you know a dozen census tracts that you need, um, the sort of practical way of how you would go about doing that is you would need to download all the census tracts, 
uh, for for uh, um, you know from the census profile file, and then you need to isolate those uh, the ones that you want, uh, and then apply the the aggregations. And so that's what we're really just uh, trying to address here is a quick way to to do some of those things. Um, so uh, it, it's a simple tool. What I'm going to show you, um, we as we were thinking about this tool, we thought about all sorts of other um, possibilities and other features that that we'd want to put out there. Uh, to start, we we just didn't really know if this is something that um, would get a lot of uh, use or if it was sort of hitting the right point. So we decided not to do the the Cadillac version. Uh, what we decided was let's put out um, sort of a, a functional prototype. Uh, that does what we think is the sort of minimum uh, needed to to be useful, and then and then let's see what kind of response we get. And, and that's part of what this presentation is for: is to uh, help to spread the, the the word that this tool is out there, um, get uh, more people using it, and then hear back from you um, what are other things that you would would like to see. Um, so this the sort of limitations that come with that is where. Um, you know, we've uh, only only providing 2021 census data. Uh, of course, uh, it'd be interesting to look at and, and make available previous census years. Uh, we've pre-selected the variables um, partly to to keep it a little bit simpler for the user so that they, they don't have to have uh, too much knowledge about all the uh, the variety of census variables, but but also just to keep the user interface more manageable. Uh, and you'll see from the variables that we've chosen there, they're really with the social sector in mind. Um, and and then the, the key parts are we uh, provide you with a report that uh, will show you in a sort of semi-graphical way the, the aggregate data, uh, the opportunity to download the data as a, as a CSV so you can manipulate it in the spreadsheet. Uh, and if you happen to be a, um, a GIS person uh, and use ArcGIS or QGIS or any, any of those types of tools, uh, we have the boundary file as well so that you can uh, make use of it in other other ways. Okay, so I'm going to save the example use cases because I'll I'll jump into the uh, the demo. Um, perhaps I'll I'll just pause uh, quickly just to see if there are any questions so far. I was wondering also with the demo if you could um, put the link for the demo just into the chat just so we have it. Yeah. If, if some people like to just do it along as you're doing it. I think that's um, the demo I have is not is running on my machine, not on the internet. Just for just to keep things safe for the, uh, you know, the classic uh, rely on the internet during a presentation. So I just need to type it out here. But there you go. Censusaggregator.ca is uh, is the link you're looking for. Um, so I will um, I'll walk you through just a little bit of the the interface. Um, I think you know for for many people who are already accustomed to using online uh, map based products, I think we've just borrowed from a lot of the usual um, conventions. You know, map on the left, sidebar on the right type types of things. But uh, I'll just sort of explain uh, what we have here. Uh, so the default view uh, is showing us uh, census tracts. Um, right now, this is this is sort of zoom in, zoomed into Toronto. Uh, incidentally, one of the uh, suggestions that we, we had in a previous webinar is could we have the user select uh, where to start, which is, I think, a, a great suggestion. Um, so uh, the default view uh, at the census tract is also showing us that um, core plus shading for population density. Um, we have thought about whether we would, would allow the user to toggle uh, a little bit more to see other uh, con con contextual information, but uh, to start, this, this is sort of what we have as, as a way of just understanding as you're choosing which geographies you want to combine and how they're different. You don't need to memorize your, your census tracts. Um, you, can, you can also keep an eye out for, you know, do I want to choose census tracts that are sort of high population density or more rural areas. So you can see that a little bit uh, through the shading. Um, I will show you that there, there is a little bit of the base layer uh, coming through. So when you do zoom in, you can see street names, uh, parks and that sort of thing. So if you um, you know are trying to align this with uh, some other uh, landmarks or, or boundaries that you're familiar with, you can, you can zoom in a bit to, uh, to see that uh, a little bit more clearly. Um, you've probably also noticed as I'm uh, hovering my mouse, you, 
you get a little bit hover effect with the yellow and there's a uh, rectangle that's in the bottom right that's changing as I as I move my mouse and that's just showing me some uh, basic uh, stats for this these particular census tracts just number of people number of households and the uh, area and population density so just a little bit of additional information to help help with uh, uh, help with navigation determining uh, what areas you're highlighting. Um, so I think you're probably all familiar already that census tracts are uh, only covering major uh, urban areas, specifically census metropolitan areas. Uh, so we do also offer census subdivisions, which have better coverage in Canada. And the census subdivision is sort of the equivalent of a, a lower tier municip municipality. Um, and so you can see that uh, the coverage improves um, uh, across Canada. There are some parts of uh, Canada that, that do not have census tract uh, subdivisions. Uh, and you'll note if I zoom out too far, they, they disappear from the map and a little re reminder appears here just to tell you uh, to zoom in. And that's just a little bit of a, le a limitation with the uh, particular tool that uh, that we're using as to how how much detail can be shown at, at a particular zoom level. Um, so I'll, uh, why don't I move ourselves over into uh, into Alberta? Um, the uh, other thing that I'll, I'll sort of point out is um, so in addition to these toggles, there's a little bit of help test text that I can hover over if you want to just get a little bit more information about what uh, what each of this, these steps entail. Um, so the first step is choose your geographic unit, census tracts or census subdivisions. Uh, the next step is to choose your area and you can do that in two ways. One is you can click to select um, or even click to deselect if you want. So and you can see as I click uh, a dark boundary appears to show what my selection is. Um, this method's kind of useful if you want to have uh, disc, uh, continuous areas. So I can actually uh, if there's some use case where I wanted to select an area here and select an area there and I don't want them attached, then the click to select can be quite useful. Um, but it, it doesn't involve, you know, you need to click each one at, at a time to uh, update your selected region. Um, you may also be noticing that the air that this chart on the right is updating as I click and I can see that right now I have 12 census tracts selected and here's the sort of aggregate uh, high level aggregate details about what, what's been selected. There's a little clear selection button here if I want to zero this out and I, the other drawing method is uh, by polygon. And so this is as simple as uh, choosing a place to start and clicking and it will mark a point and then I can mark more points as I go and it will. Uh, draw this sort of orange area. Um, which uh, is, is a essentially the area that I'm going to select to close the polygon. I can either click on the last spot or just do a double click. And you can see once I do that, I get uh, some highlighted uh, areas. And uh, and so what's happening here is the. Um, polygon is uh, selecting the anything that intersects with um, with the orange. This actually is. Uh, Actually, not sure if this is a, a problem on my end, but it does look like there's there's some census tracts that are not showing up here. I'm sure there must be census tracts that are covering this area. Um, so this is an interesting uh, issue, but um, but yeah, we don't have census tracts showing up there, so I might have to take a look at that. Whether that's on just on my end or actually on the live site, um, unless it's possible there's census tracts missing there, but. Um, so, uh, so what you can see is the area uh, that I've selected. Um, there's some additional, uh, the polygon, I guess, additional options to um, uh, move things over. So I can uh, make modifications if I to the polygon if I needed to do some small tweaks. Uh, I can actually, if I want, I can even slide the. Let's see if I can do that. I can slide the whole polygon over itself too. So here's some, I guess, advanced polygon uh, <laughs> polygon methods. Um, so once I'm happy with the area that I have, then I have some options to download information. Um, so there's three pieces here, which I, I sort of mentioned earlier. One is to download 
a report and it comes in a PDF or HTML flavor. Uh, so the PDF uh, is more portable of the two. The HTML might work better for screen readers, which is why we, we offered that. So I'm going to uh, hit the PDF just to show you uh, what happens. This will, uh, will take a little bit of time to load, and I do see there are a few things uh, showing in the chat, so maybe I'll, I'll try to address those too. Um, yeah, so Darren's asked, how does it deal with air areas with no, no data? Um, so we have, uh, we, we have um, filtered out uh, areas that are highly suppressed. Uh, and then in the aggregation, um, there, there will be a note that will tell you when, when something is highly suppressed and, uh, and whether it's affected the, uh, the aggregation or not. So in some cases, um, we do not uh, do an aggregation uh, when, it's, when it's highly suppressed uh, because we, we don't know, um, you know, we don't have enough information to, to make a good guess of what, what the values are. When it's like a highly suppressed number, in one, highly suppressed in one of many regions and it's below I'll have to rem remind myself what the percentage was, but um, when it's a small enough proportion of the total aggregate, uh, then we will uh, still put a, a, an aggregate in the in the tool. Um, okay. Okay, so there seems to have been an error that's corrected itself. So the magic of the internet. Uh, this is just about Alberta data, I think. Um, so you'll see here, uh, this is the PDF output. Um, so th this is the one that's a bit more visual and, and uh, you know, you can use as a bit of a report. Um, so it shows the, the area that you selected uh, has a few cards here that just shows you some high level detail about what, uh, what the totals were. Uh, and then we have some thematic groupings of, of uh, some common census variables. So here we have uh, age, household, and families. You'll note for the most part we're we're sticking to uh, census uh, like stat can terminology for variables. Occasionally we uh, we we make the terminology a little bit uh, briefer, um, so we just to shorten the the labels. Um, but we've tried to uh, sort of split the difference between um, you know adhering to the sort of the stat can for formal label uh, and make it. But we're not trying to change the. The label not that the definition would change but but just to make it a little bit more um, uh, reader friendly for for uh, space space limitation reasons uh, so here's the, the here's the population profile by age and family type then we have one by language so again just some common uh, common variables from what with you know there's very many other uh, census variables around language uh, we have a bit around income and housing um, I think one thing I'll just point out is that we've uh, done an estimate for the median household income, uh, which is basically looking at uh, all the income buckets that StatCan uh, publishes for household income. Um, and then uh, uh, we, we uh, uh, find what the middle bucket is and we assume a, a linear distribution within the middle bucket uh, and, and take the, the what would be the middle of the entire distribution in, in that bucket. So it's not quite it's not quite a median. Well, it's definitely not a median. Uh, it's better than an average of medians. Um, and just to indicate that it is an estimate, we've rounded to the to the nearest thousand. Um, what else can I say about uh, about this section here? I think that this is pretty straightforward. Um, we we've kept just household income in here right now, so we do the estimated median. Uh, we've done some buckets below a hundred thousand, mainly because we will. We're interested in just showing even, uh, even bucket or bin widths. So you know they're they're just twenty thousand in width. Um, I think we did hear in our webinar that that people would like to see the the buckets that are larger. The uh, the widths change, so they they uh, they they go from twenty thousand to twenty five and then to fifty. But um, uh, but we are looking at at showing more of the distribution here. I think for many like human services, community services, you are, we're often interested in sort of the low income um, part of the uh, the distribution, which is why we focused on that. Uh, and we have a little bit on uh, diversity and immigration. 
I think these are pretty straightforward. Uh, and then the last part that we have not added just yet, but we'll be adding as uh, soon as the last um, details from the last census release, uh, mainly just on educational attainment. Um, at the end of this are all the definitions. Uh, and that's that's the report in a nutshell. So I'll, I'll just flip back to the app itself and um, just point out that we can uh, download the data as well. And the data will reflect what's in the report, and we've also included uh, a little bit more of the, um, uh, a little bit more detail uh, that sort of adheres to the original uh, StatCan um, distributions that are published. And, and just to make that a little bit clearer, I'll bring this over just so you can see that. Uh, so this is the CSV, and let me just uh, break this into the width. So, for example, in the in the standard census profile, you get these five year age age bins, which we, we thought would be too long as a chart, uh, but it's nice to be able to give the user with um, those uh, those breakdowns here. So you get the five years, but you also get the uh, sort of brackets that we uh, display in the report, um, and we do the same with income. You can get the original brackets that. Uh, that StatCan uh, publishes, which has sort of very small uh, bins for the, the lower part of the distribution, and then they grow as over time, as well as the ones that we show in the report. Uh, so there's the data, both calculated in terms of uh, raw counts, and then there's a, a proportion as well. I think the last thing uh, just to point out, I, I don't think I'll demonstrate downloading it, but if you uh, download the, the boundary file, you get to what's called a GeoJSON file. Uh, it's really sort of a text formatted file, and you can drag that into GIS software um, and, and use that for your vision visualizations. Um, so those are the main functions. Maybe the uh, other thing I'll, I'll just mention is, so it, I mean, it's great to be able to download data and send that to people. You don't even actually need to do that if you want to share this with others. There's a little share button, and when you click that, this will give you the co the coordinates encoded as a URL. So I, I can just copy this and uh, send this to my friend, and they will uh, uh, get this map uh, showing up with the, the area selected at, as here, and they can run the report locally. Um, so then you don't even need to worry about uh, sending PDFs and, and that sort of thing. And certainly if you want to bookmark uh, an area, and this is like one one of the things we've considered doing is just creating some uh, a series of bookmarks for commonly uh, referenced areas. For example, in Toronto, the Greater Toronto Area is a, a sort of a pseudo political boundary that um, is not uh, does not align with the Census Metropolitan Area. So uh, people are often wanting to um, retrieve the census data for the GTA. Um, and not this, the Toronto CMA, and, and that's uh, that's something that we can bookmark in, in this tool. Okay, so I'll, that's that's the so like I said, it's a pretty simple tool. Uh, not not a lot to show other than uh, what's shown right here. Um, I will uh, I will show you a few sample use cases, but I'll, I'll just check the chat here uh, just to see if there's anything else I've missed. So. Uh, when a CT is not completely selected in the polygon you create, the data from the CT is added as the total from the CT or proportional to the area. Yeah, it's added as the total, um, and you can sort of uh, see that doing here, that happening here. This um, polygon just clips the edge of this CT, and the whole CT selected. So we're not at this point. We're not uh, splitting uh, CTs and then doing uh, proportional. Uh, um, uh, proportional splitting, so that's important to to keep in mind. All right, Bethany has a question. Uh, if we consider promoting this tool with the community data program. Um, yeah, you know what? We, uh, we have not. Uh, I, I'm familiar with the community data folks, but we have we actually haven't chatted with them, so it's a great reminder to uh, uh, to speak with them. Yeah, thank you for for reminding us about that. And that, that might be a really good connection. I've worked with them a little bit in Edmonton. I think we had um, worked to establish sort of the Edmonton group here. And the Calgary has a really uh, strongly established group down there um, where they have some really good uh, GIS stuff. So there might be some things that could connect with this tool as well. 
across yeah. adopt program. So it's, it, I think it's a great idea. Um, yeah, I, I was just going to, I don't know them personally. So if, uh, if, if uh, someone has a, uh, a, a contact there, um, that would be, uh, that'd be much appreciated to just to help, uh, help make the connection. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. And, and if you could maybe, maybe Bethany might have a stronger connection. I think she might be in that, that area. Um, but I, if not, I, I, I have also contacts as well. So. <laughs> Um, but but you might want to contact with the actual program, not just not their regional branches. Um, yeah. The other thing I was just going to say is if you do have any questions on how to use this or anything right now, that would be great if if you want to reach out with any of those as well. Um, if you are playing around with the tool or anything. So. And I can let you uh, ruminate on that a bit. There, there are a couple of. Um, example use cases that we imagined that might be common to. Uh, um, community organizations, so I'm, I'm happy to um, walk through those too. They're 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 quite quick. Um, and I, I think probably for for all of you who've been through this workshop series, they might be uh, you might already have anticipated these, so that this might not be anything new for you. Um, so our, our sort of the the way we presented this in in our last webinar is we imagined a, a fictitious. Uh, um, organization called the World Juggling Academy, uh, and you know, and their uh, uh, main focus is to promote the circus arts in uh, uh, you know across the globe. Um, and uh, and suppose the World uh, Juggling Academy is looking to introduce a, a new program in a in this case in a, in a part of Toronto called called Scarborough, um, and they sort of you know realized as a as an organization that. Uh, perhaps uh, circus has a lot of uh, parallels in many other cultures, but when they look at their uh, um, their members or their participants, the the that diversity is not not represented. So so let's say they're looking to to do some outreach and develop new programming uh, with the hopes of of reaching uh, diverse communities and, and and especially making it available to uh, households with low income. Um, so you could imagine a use case where you, you might want to make a case to a funder. Uh, that uh, a new program model, in this case, a, a subsidy would, would be useful for addressing access and inclusion goals. Um, so, you know, one thing the funder would be interested in know is, you know, why have you selected this area and why is this, why is this the right place um, to address uh, uh, your goals? Um, so, of course, um, you know, they can use, they can create that census profile um, for that area. And in fact, you know, it's what's, uh, nice about the little report parts is you can literally just copy pieces out of the re uh, report and put it into your own report, and then that becomes, um, you know, some of the visuals that you might use in your, uh, you know, as as you present to to that funder. Um, the sort of follow up on this use case is let's say the World Juggling Academy has been running their program for a year, and now they want to evaluate whether they uh, successfully reached their intended audience. Uh, and so you can imagine um, as a as a service provider or uh, someone delivering programs, you're you're naturally collecting information about uh, about the people you're working with, not just where they are, but uh, in this case, if you're offering a subsidy, you're you're probably asking some information about income. Uh, you might already ask about uh, age to uh, you know um, assign people to the the appropriate uh, program level. Um, and then for diversity and inclusion purposes, perhaps you're also asking about race. And so the, there, there's sort of a natural uh, opportunity to compare the characteristics of the people you're serving with the neighborhood or, or area characteristics. Um, now, it would be very strange if they were identical uh, and there isn't a, a, so you're not going to expect them to be the same. Um, and there isn't necessarily a um, uh, you know, when you find they're different, there isn't necessarily a, uh, a clear expl explanation as to why they're different, uh, but it's a good exercise to to look at the differences and ask ask yourself whether the differences make sense uh, and if there's anything that you want to do about the, the differences. Um, so, for example, if you you know if you were targeting low income households and you found that you somehow were serving um, households that had uh, higher income average income or median income relative to the uh, the surrounding area, then then you might make a conclusion that your 
you might not have quite met that goal. And, and so how, how could you uh, address that? Um, so in, in this case, uh, you know, the, the way to approach this is you could run your program data uh, and get your characteristics about your program population, and then you can run the census data through census aggregator and just put them next to each other uh, and look at those differences. Um, so, you know, here we've got, uh, I've just, uh, you know, imagine two, two areas, one on the visible minority uh, variable, and, and here are the participants from the program, and here's the area characteristics, and then the other from household income, uh, from a household income perspective. Um, and, and so, you know, as a, as a service provider, you can then ask yourself, uh, you know, what accounts for these differences? Do we want to change, try to move any of these things uh, from a, a program perspective and, and who we're reaching? Um, and, uh, you know, and are, are we happy with the results? Uh, and in this case, you know, that this might, um, you know, this might be sort of the, exactly the kind of outcome that World Jug Juggling Academy is looking for. You can see sort of the total visible minority population is higher than the uh, neighborhood area. So perhaps they're doing a better job then of, of reaching the diverse families, which is sort of what was one of their, their goals. And then similarly on, on the income side, you know, they can see where they're uh, above or below the, uh, the area uh, averages. And, and when they think about the subsidy levels that they have, you know, is, is this boosting the, the percentages of where they think that that should be happening? Um, so, you know, these are very basic comparisons. This is not, not for scientific or, or research purposes, but uh, just starts to get uh, organizations into uh, ways that they can query their own data and compare it to something else. I'm um, just starting to take those steps and in, in becoming a little bit more uh, data oriented in, in how they uh, review and, and look at their programs. So I think that, uh, yeah, that's that's all I had for the uh, demo and the examples. And I was uh, just going to add one uh, one other example. I know we yeah. have discussed a lot. Um, is I, I know when I was looking at um, Ontario, sometimes they also use those as they're planning for their new locations within the city. As they actually look into the demographics and who they'd be sort of agreeing to choose those sites uh, yeah. that they're choosing. Uh, and I thought that was like really inspiring. They also sometimes use other data as they look at that, not just the census data. Uh, but I, I do think it's an interesting use case. Um, I'm going to stop the recording um, at this point.